Thank you for joining us here at SSC Live TV. Dr. Chen Jobst will be discussing how your dietary habits can assist you in your spiritual goals. Welcome to Taste and See. Well, hello once again and welcome to Taste and See on SSC Live TV. My name is Ken Jobst and this is... Elisa Jobst. And we're just having a great time today. Thank you for coming along with us. We spend a little time every week at the intersection of faith and food. And today, what are we gonna make? What are we cooking today, Elisa? Apple pancakes. We're making apple pancakes. I love apple pancakes. We've got our, our trusty little griddle out here that, uh, it, oh, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Get you a griddle. We've got it on already, so it's, it's already warm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to whip up some apple pancakes that are just amazing. But you know what? Um, <laughs> let's go ahead. We've got all of our ingredients over here. I'm gonna tell you a short little story. I'm gonna tell you a little Bible story that's gonna go along with the apple pancakes. But we're gonna to have to get started with the apple pancakes first, because I wanna be sure they have time to, time to cook. Now, what do you need for apple pancakes? Apples, right? Mm -hmm. So this particular recipe calls for five apples sliced. And I've sliced them up, I've got, uh, I've got a few apples. And you know what I learned from you? What? <laughs> Variety in apples, yes. right? Yes. We actually, for these five apples, we've got three different varieties. It looks like we've got a, what? Granny Smith. A Granny Smith and maybe... Crips. A Fuji? Maybe a Fuji. And a uh, Gala. Okay, yeah. So, so three different apples because you want to have just a little bit of variety. You know, some apples are a little bit uh, more firm and so you can cook them and they keep their shape. Some apples get a little bit runny when you, you cook them, so we, we've got a good variety. Do the same thing when you make apple pie. Use three different kinds of apples in your apple pie. Absolutely. Now, how are we gonna make these pancakes? First thing that we're going to do, let's take one cup of all-purpose flour. Now, we already portioned these out. I'm gonna put my all-purpose flour right here in this bowl, that's one cup of all-purpose flour. We're gonna use it for a good purpose, right? Okay, <laughs> so we got that. And a tablespoon of sugar. Optional. It's optional, but you know. Yeah, Come on. it's not optional. Pancakes that aren't sweet? <laughs> What's the point? Apple pancakes that are not sweet? Mm -mm. <laughs> and a little half teaspoon of salt. So there we go. They're all right in there and so that's our dry ingredients. We put all of our dry ingredients together. Now we've got another bowl. And what needs to go in the other bowl? The egg, all the liquidy things. All right, so egg, I'm going to milk, let- milk, and canola oil. I'm going to let you break the egg. Oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're breaking eggs over here. Breaking eggs. All right, and, and let me just take the shell. You know how you get a piece of eggshell out of the dish in case there's eggshell that gets in the dish? You use a piece of the egg. Eggshell gets out eggshell. Because the, when you look at an egg shell in the egg, it's not where you think it is if you use your finger, but if you use the eggshell to get the eggshell out, you can see and it's not distorted. One egg. One tablespoon of canola oil. Ready? Ready. There it goes. That's one tablespoon of canola oil. Hope all those, by the way, canola, there's not a canola plant, right? <laughs> right? Right. It, it's, it, it's actually Canadian oil, low acid. Canola, Can, Canadian oil, low acid. And it's from a plant called the rapeseed plant. And I understand why the people in public relations, you know, change the name. And so we have our egg, we have one tablespoon of canola oil, and now we're going to pour in. We gotta beat this egg one, first. Okay, let's go ahead and beat that egg. Okay. 
You know what? A whisk is a good thing. Just the other day I was saying, you know what? Every now and again, you gotta have a good whisk. Why? To stir things up. That's right. Here comes the milk. Here comes one cup of low-fat milk. Fat-free. Skim milk. Fat-free milk. My great aunt Ethel said that skim milk is a scandal. <laughs> you should never, you should never use. but you know what? We live in healthier times. That's so, right. so we're doing it. And, and you know, I'm like a child at heart. So I like to go like this with the whisk. It's a blender. <laughs> Make it into a blender. Okay, there we go. That's what we got right there. Let me take this. We'll put it on our ever popular shelf. Now, now what do we need to do? What we're going to do is, right, put the dry ingredients or wait a minute. Should, should we do it the other way around? No. I don't know. What's it say? In a bowl of flour, add, add to dry ingredients. Add to dry ingredients and stir. Add to dry ingredients, right? Yes. So we're going to add this to the dry ingredients. Are we ready? Do you want to stir while I add? Sure. Ready to go. One, two, three. Yes, sir. Adding over here. Don't want to spill it. It's all going in. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Oh, love it. Okay. Now, I'll trip over that later. <laughs> Please don't. We have an extra egg just in case. You never can tell. Oh, look at that. It's getting batterish. It's looking batterish. It's looking like pancake batter. Now, Except just about the time it starts looking like pancake batter, you know what we need to do? Tell me. We need to put the apples in. Is that right? Sure. Where'd it go? I just want to make sure it's all. I want to fold them in. Supposed to fold be them on in there. Now we've got apple slices. We're folding them in. A couple of Granny Smiths here and there. A couple of other Gala apple slices. Ooh, I love the apple slices. There we go. Let's just keep them, keep them coming. How many? Uh, supposedly, we're, we're supposed to five enjoying medium it. apples. Five medium. That's apples. That's insane. <laughs> this may be a little bit more pancakey than appley, if you know what I mean. Yeah, right? I think theirs is more apple than pancake. If theirs, we're supposed to right, have five right. whole apples. So we've basically got three apples that we're putting in here, but it, it's working out pretty well. <laughs> it's working out as as well as can be expected. <laughs> okay, now. How's that? Pretty full. Let's start frying some apple pancakes. I don't know if it's gonna be apple pancakes or apples with stuff on them. Apples with stuff on them will be just fine. <laughs> now, watch this. I'm going, I'm stirring it. I like how professional you are. I know, but I'm, I'm going to get a little spoon right over here, my little spoon. And let's start frying apple pancakes, you ready? One apple pancake, two apple pancake. Granny Smith wants an apple pancake. Whatever happened to Grandpa Smith? He wants a pancake too. <laughs> a gala pancake. I'm down in here in the batter. A Fuji pancake. Another great aunt Ethel. Pancake. Okay, now here's what here's what we're going to do. Just because we have the capacity to do it, we're going to add a little bit more batter. Right? We're. You know what the the baseball people always say about pancakes? Batter up. You know, there's a reason we don't do this before a live studio audience. <laughs> that was bad. That's because. <laughs> Elisa does all the comedy for us right over here. Oh, shoot. Now, okay, we're we're getting them a little more battered, and that's fine because you know that's the way it should be. Battering them all, and and by the way, we have uh, used our favorite aerosol oil, uh, which is also canola oil, to get these pancakes going. Oh, that's perfect. In the professional perfectionist world, these are five inch circles of apples. Right, right. So we're gonna let those cook a little bit. And you know, I just, I like the batter. Uh, you, you did such a good job on the batter. <laughs> it's so sweet. That I'm, I'm just gonna fill in some space on the griddle because why not? 
And there we go. Oh, I was going to tell you a Bible story. Don't let me not tell you a Bible story because this actually comes from the Old Testament book of Judges. Remember Gideon? Gideon and his army had 300 men. Gideon and his army. Poor Gideon. I tell you what, he's got a story. Read it in the book of Judges. But along about in the book of Judges in chapter 8, Gideon's got some stuff going on. He's chasing two kings and their armies. You know, he's like, uh, okay, I got I to gotta put a whooping on these, these two kings and their armies. So he goes through this town, and he goes through the town, and he goes, hey, you know, everybody, look, can, do you have something that we can eat? You got a, like a bologna sandwich or something for my 300 men, because we're chasing these kings out of the country because, you know, they're, they're being mean to you and everything else. You know what they said? They said, nah, move on. They said, keep moving. Get out of here. We don't want you. And, and so, like, you know, what's Gideon to do? So he like goes like this with his shoulders and he moves on to the next town. At the next town, he says, hey, people in this town, you got any like, uh, you know, like a, uh, any kind of Doritos or, or Grippos? You got any chips or anything for us? And they said, no, get out of town. We don't want to mess with you. Mm. So Gideon, in his Gideon mind, says, I'm going to remember all you all mm -hmm. gotcha. when I come back from putting a whooping on these kings. And that's exactly what he did. He went and he put a whooping on the kings. Watch, I'm going to turn a pancake here. Woo. Not quite ready. Not quite ready, but golden. Golden. He came back from putting a whooping on the kings. And you know what happened? He comes to this first town. And in the first town, he finds a kid. He, he finds a guy who's probably 14, 15 years old. The Bible says young man, right? Remember, young man in Bible times, if you're 13, you're a man. So young man is like 14, 15, 16, finds a 14 or 15 year old out on the street. And in, in Judges chapter eight, verse 13, here's what it says. Then Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle, from the ascent of Heres, and he caught a young man of the men of Succoth and interrogated him. And he wrote down for him the leaders of Succoth and its elders, 77 men. Okay, so this young man told them about the leaders in Succoth. He could name 77 of their leaders. Watch this, watch this. Can you name everybody on Metro Council? No. Can you? <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> But, but this, this kid, this kid that, that Gideon just picks off the street in, in Succoth, you know, Gideon says, tell me all the names of your leaders. And the kid, oh, okay, first of all, kid sits down and writes them all down. Writes them, writes them, 77, knows them and can write. So here's a kid who is literate, right? And what this is saying is that in, in Bible times, even in Old Testament times, most of the folk in Israel could read and write by the time they were certainly by the time they were 13 or 14. Yeah. Now, watch this. Not only can they read and write at such an early age, but they're civically engaged. They know who their leaders are. They know who their elders are. And if somebody just walking around off the street said, Tell me everybody on Metro Council in Louisville. Tell me the mayor, the assistant mayor. Tell me your representative. Tell me your senators. All that kind of business. How many of us would be able to do that? Not I. Right? So, so, so what this is saying is, first of all, young folk, get an education. That's right. There is nothing that a tyrant loves more than an ignorant populace. A, a, a tyrant, somebody who's going to be mean to you, doesn't want you to be educated. They, they don't want you to finish school. They want you to be, you know, not everything you can be. So what you want to do is finish school. Mm -hmm. And upon finishing school, stay civically engaged, right? Know where your voting place is. Know, know the candidates who are running for office. Do all that kind of business because, wow, that's going to make, that's, that makes a big difference in life. What else do you think? I'm going to say one thing. I'm, let, let me, I'm, I'm kind of, 
I need to get my soapbox and put it right here because I'm going to step up on my soapbox. Watch. Let me talk about education. You say, oh, Pastor Ken, you're always going to talk about education because you're involved over at Simmons. Yes, I'm always going to talk about education because here, here's the thing. You have heard it said that education is the great equalizer. Well, let me tell you. It can only be the great equalizer if it's available to all, if it's available to everybody. That's the way it becomes the great equalizer. So you know what, so often the wealthy schools, right, get all the resources, get all the money, get, and, and you know, wealthy students go to wealthy schools. But I tell you what, that's not what America is supposed to be all about. America is supposed to be about equal opportunity. You know what? I'm going to give an equal opportunity to each of these apple slices <laughs> right about now because they're getting to the point. These are, are nice and, you know, just beginning to get golden brown. In addition to cooking the, the, the pancake batter, right, mm -hmm. we're also cooking the apple. And I think that's just a delightful, wonderful thing. Now, here we go. Ready? Oh, that's yeah. nice. That's the way that's supposed to look right there. And you know what? These little guys, the, the little teeny tiny dots. <laughs> one day, watch this. One day, somebody's going to steal my idea of pancake dots. There you right? go. And it's probably going to be you, right? You're going to take my pancake dot idea. We'll put them in a little baggie with a tiny bit of butter and powdered sugar. That's Cinnamon awesome. sugar. And sell them. <laughs> Oh, no, that's the one. That's, that's perfect. The one that's the one I for. want. Okay, we got, we're, we're moving now. We got pancake batter on the griddle. Now, let me come back around. Mm -hmm. Talking about Gideon, talking about the kid that Gideon, you know, uh, interrogated on the street. And the reason we're doing apple pancakes is because you always need two apples right? You need one apple to make pancakes with, and you need another apple to take to the teacher, right? So the teacher needs an apple on the teacher's desk. Now this, this is the one that's been cooking the longest. Oh, now. It's running away. It's running away from me. I'm going to have to come at it from another direction. Oh, there we go. Kaboom. Perfect. Yes. They're all cooking it a little bit. You know what, th this is the thing about these cook surfaces, is that it's not exactly perfectly even heat mm -hmm. because there is a coil that goes in kind of a, would you call it oval, oval. oblong, mm -hmm. semi-curved rectangular Not rectangular. Fashion. <laughs> and so oh, yeah, parts rectangular. of it, yeah, parts of it heat up before others. Now I got apples that want to be Stuck working together. together. Oh, oh, no. There are a few things in life more satisfying than flipping a pancake correctly. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> now. The sound. And, and the sound is good, too. Let me, I'm going to divide this one right here, just like that. Oh, oh they all want to move together. Isn't that just nice? They want to all be together. They want to be together. And even if we're going to, you know what? They want to be together. I was saying, let them be together. Let them be together. Hoy, there they go. Look at your talent. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, you have a little bit of experience with uh, vegetable pancakes, right? Yes. Like uh, uh, shredding different vegetables and then a pancake batter, mm -hmm. uh, shredding carrots, shredding potato, right? And onion. And onion. And taking the, the shredded vegetables together with a little bit of uh, flour and yeah. And it makes a wonderful vegetable pancake. So earlier I noticed that I was kind of uh, talking about sweet and savory, right? So these are going to be our sweet pancakes. Mm -hmm. But if we wanted to, we could take exactly the same mixture Keep out the, the optional sugar 
and we could make a savory pancake. And you know what I'm thinking about? Like a potato latke. Like a latke, absolutely. But I, I was thinking about just slicing zucchini. Oh yeah, that would be good too. And slices of zucchini with this pancake re batter recipe, but no sugar. No sugar. What Maybe should we put in it in sh instead of sugar? Some salt. More salt. What else? Zucchini. Zucchini. Mm. Cracked black pepper is the answer. Cracked black pepper it is. All righty. Now we're going to move these around because I do want to, I want to put a couple more of these on the grill. I think the bottom side of these two is you, finished. You, you're just looking, you, you want to take a look? This one, for sure. Okay, we're going to move these over. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean right there. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, look at that. And do him too. Okay. His little tail's off though. That's okay. We're going to, this is Haley's Comet, the pancake Haley's Comet. And it's going to, woo! Perfect. Oh, yeah. They're, oh, they're looking good. Now, uh, just, just because we can, let's go ahead and put the rest of these on there. We've, we've made a little bit of room. Why is it that when you put things on the griddle, they end, you, you end up with a little bit more room later on? I don't know, but we want to find out. So here we go. I'm going to put a couple more of these on. And I do, okay. There's one with the star. And the star pancake is made exclusively by cutting the apple in two and revealing what's inside the apple. What's inside the apple? Seeds are inside the apple. Cut it this way. Or by the equator, right. Yeah. I'm having a bit of a challenged time, but it's, it's all gonna work out. Watch. All my fingers in there. There we oh. go. <laughs> now, now I'm rearranging. This is such a good adventure. I want to move him over and I put him right there. There. Okay. Now, right. watch, watch. I've got a pancake with a little bit of a star in it. Mm -hmm. See our starred pancake? Beautiful. It's a center star apple pancake. That's good luck if you get the one with the, the center star in. But don't eat the seeds. Now, Here's a question for you. How many seeds are in an apple? Hmm, ver it varies. Yeah, I, I'm seeing like one, two, three, four, five little seed pod type mm -hmm. things in there. Five to so, seven. Yeah, five to seven. Okay, that's how many seeds are in the apple. How many apples are in each seed? Oh, a whole tree's worth. That's <laughs> It's exactly right. You know what? You can guess how many seeds are in the apple, but you never know how many apples are in a seed. And apple <laughs> seeds are so teeny, teeny, tiny, right? And then an apple tree that's going to live for 60, 70, 80 years and have eight, think of that, 80 years worth, let's 75 years worth of harvests from that tree, from that one seed. You know what? You spit on out, spit out an apple seed. You don't think anything of it. I'll tell you what, great things have small beginnings, right? It's absolutely true. Now, we're cooking over here, aren't we? We are. It smells so good. And it does smell good. It's that apple-y, um, ooh, apple-y yum. Apple pancakes getting ready to come along. Oh, you got to make these. You got to make, oh, what have you got over there? Confectioner sugar. <laughs> Because I like it to be sweet. We're living <laughs> at Taste and See, right? Now, right now, this particular apple, it's a Granny Smith that is pancake battered, is, is getting a little sizzly. Oh, and it's just, oh, wow. They make, they have their own sweetness, right? And we're going to add a little more. Just a little. Just a little more. I want to take this one off the heat and bring them over to you right there. And you know what? Because that one's looking lonely, I want to bring this one over too. Oh, it's big. Oh yeah, but we're going to cut it. We're going to allow it its autonomy. So it's going to 
come right over there like this. This great big one comes over here on that plate and this one, listen to them, they're sizzling. And, and here's, this is a thick one. My thick one is still, let's see what he looks like on the other side. Oh, he's coming right along. That's great. That's great. I'm going to let him, let him cruise. This one, I'm going to look on the other side. You will too. Look at that. Oh, he's still going. He Golden. Needs, he he still, needs to be over there. Still needs to be on the warm spot. A little hotter. You know, we, we love to just play with the grill. And this is the closest thing to play in with the grill during inclement weather. So there we go. Now, these guys, once again, these guys can keep going. But let's go ahead and dust our... Uh, Dust our apple pancakes with a little bit of that confectioner sugar. Confectioner sweetheart of mine. <laughs> and we have, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, that's okay. Now, I want you to see. Well, how come you're getting more sugar? Because there's spaces that don't have it. They all need to be covered. Every bite has to have some <laughs> confectioner sugar, right? Okay, it, it, it's not looking bad over here on Taste and See. And, and we've, we've made plenty. We've got apples left over. Now comes the moment of truth. And the moment of truth is going to be, here you go. Thank you. Your implements, my implements. And I'm diving right in. Oh, they, they cut well. And I'm making just a little pizza shaped cut. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm eating oh, a whole wedge. Oh, oh, it's steaming. It's very hot. Don't, oh. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We did it again. We both ate at the same time, right? Mm hmm. Now, the app, okay, you've got the pancake on the top and on the bottom, right? Pancake batter on the top and the bottom. That's not sweet. It, it's not overwhelmingly sweet. But the apple? The apple brings it. Ugh. That's just perfect. And you can pretend you're healthy because you can call it eating an apple. Right. I had an apple. What'd you have for breakfast? An apple. apple. Fried Pancake. Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get in here too just a little bit more because... I'm going to have to, I have to admit to this. I left the cinnamon at home. Mm. Cinnamon would have just mm -hmm. absolutely been the thing for these. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll, we'll go home and get some cinnamon. Now, oh, look at that. So pancake layer, you, okay. Crepe layer. That's what it is. It must be an Fancy. apple crepe. Mm -hmm. You know, pancakes are $3, crepes are 7 we just went fancier. That's a crepe. That's awesome. That had to be a crepe. Yeah. The red mm -hmm. one is definitely sweeter. Okay, do you want to try mine? No, I had I had the red one and I had the green one. Okay, so you had a Granny Smith and a Gala. Right. I had a Gala and a Granny Smith. They are just absolutely delicious. It is. Well, is it supper time? It is supper time. It's almost supper time. This is supper. And and this this is supper and we're not sad at all about it. Flip that one. Oh, it's looking good. Look He's, at that. He's got a star on him. He's he, gonna be a good luck. You can still see the star. Good luck apple pancake. Here comes another. Good luck apple pancake. We're having fun at Taste and See. Step right over here. Ah. Get over there, run that grill. <laughs> By the way, one of my most delightful jobs as a kid, I, I worked as a grill cook. And if you can work as a grill cook, there's nothing you can't do. You can fly the space shuttle because it, it's, it's such fast paced work and you've got 17 different orders that are going at the same time, people yelling over your shoulder and you're plating up stuff. And I, I gotta tell you, it was the most fun I've ever had. So be, if you get a chance to be a grill cook, a short order cook, give it a try. You'll have a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful time. Well, you know what? It looks like the time is just about up for us today. Anything else that you'd like to share on our apple pancake adventure? No, but try them. They're really good. Absolutely. And you know what? Remember remember what we found out with Gideon, that, that even Gideon could just take a kid off the street, and the kid off the street was civically engaged and literate, could read and write and, and talk about 
the, their civic situation, the leaders of their town and all. That blows me away. That's amazing. That's a goal for us and in our communities. Amen? Amen. Well, hey, once again, from Taste and See at SSC Live TV, this is Elisa Lee Jobst. And the Reverend Dr. Ken Jobst. It has been a delight to be with you. Till next time, we'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.